with a lot of the scholarly work that people have put together. You know, I know quite a lot of the scholars who have spent entire lives by researching Mahtal, going through the details of each and every aspect of its uh, occasion that has taken place in the at the time of you know the battle of Karbala. Entire life. These are the scholars who are not concerned about you know collecting money or you know accumulating wealth. The simple people living in a simple houses in Iran and Pakistan and in India and in Iraq, particularly the Shia areas. And they're very simple people. They're all they're Alamadeen, they are uh, scholars. All they're concerned is to do some academic work, some documentation, rewriting what has been written before, write it, update that, and make it available for the general public. They're not doing it for themselves. Their struggle is to preserve the to preserve the situation of Karbala. Otherwise, over the years, over the time period passes, people do become complacent about the story of Karbala, the story of Imam Hussein. Because Imam Hussein's picture is not an ordinary picture in terms of what he has achieved and what he has done. His movement had been extensively examined by detailed scholars of all cultures, the Arabic scholars, the Persian scholars, the English scholars, philosophers, great people who we know now, you know, the Edward Gibbons, Gandhi, all of those, Martin Luther King, all of them have studied Imam Hussein and have taken the inspiration from the movement of Imam Hussein's story into their movement. And you can check it, what they have achieved in their life, taking the information, taking the, uh, the movement of Imam Hussein as an example for themselves. So if those great scholars, those great politicians, uh, freedom fighters, Mandela, they all have talked about Imam Hussein. They all have studied Imam Hussein. So Imam Hussein was this great, uh, you know, the source of inspiration. And if you give them information which is collected by our scholars, then it will be accurately translated from one original source into the source in which they can rely upon that information. Imam Hussain's story has inspired the movement, great movement of the world, because it is the story of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the story of Rasulullah. It is the story of his father. And all of that culminated in the movement of Karbala, in the movement of the battle of Karbala, and this is the, something that we need to pay attention to in a sense that Imam Hussain's Muharram, the time is for us to explain to the world the true story of Karbala. And a great, as I said, the greatest scholars have taken the great work of Imam Hussain. This particular book written by uh, Sayyid Ali Al-Hakim, it's a very good book available on the Amazon. You all know how to order things on Amazon. Latest gadgets, clothes, shoes. Everybody is doing that these days on Amazon. You log on to the Amazon and you order it. Try to order this book. It's a very interesting book written by uh, a very pious Sayyid Al Al Hakim, probably from Iraq, but he's based in Dubai. He has a house in Dubai. And he has put together a detailed account of all Imam Hussain's movement and the title of Imam Hussain, Life and Legacy. 
So please try to do your own research. And throughout the year, you don't have to do just in Muharram and finish. No, make a habit of be closer to Imam Hussain's story at what stages Imam Hussain has gone through in his lifetime uh, reaching to that. Of course, we know this story. Of course, we explain that what happened to him from the 28th of Rajab and before that, how the political situations were changing, how he had to leave uh, Makkah for Medina first, and then he leave Medina to, uh, to Karbala. All of that is, we all know that, and we are trying to cover it, that who are those people who accompany uh, Imam Hussein in Karbala. We covered quite a, in great length the movement at Kufa, the people of Kufa who invited him through letters. This is all factual details. There are no fiction in that. And it is your responsibility to understand it is a factual story, like this. It is a factual story of, of, of Imam Hussein that is written by academics, the scholars and academics who have put down the details. Because Imam Hussain's message is no ordinary message. Revolutions like Islamic revolution of the, of, of the world, should I say, not Iran, but it started in Iran. It's based upon the movement of Imam Hussain. Imam Khomeini Khadr Salah of Zaki has acknowledged on many occasions his movement that I am taking the movement of Imam Hussain as an example for my struggle for my people because he recognized that his people are suffering under the Shah's regime and nobody is raising their voices. You know, a lot of people were even criticizing Imam Khomeini at that time for the Salah of But why do we have Ali Medin have to be, uh, scholars have to be political? Their job is in the mosque, in the Husseiniya, uh, in the Hausas. Imam Khomeini said, unless I would take the example of Imam Hussein, the situation will never be same. The situation will never change. As previous scholars have not done anything, therefore I will do my best to create this movement. Yes, he was in danger, his son has been assassinated, and the, the rulers were equally cruel as the time of Imam Hussein, the rulers were threatening him uh, with the murder, with, with all sorts of assassination and all sorts of um, killings and everything. But Imam uh, Khomeini continued his movement. Imam Khomeini's movement and the movement of Islamic revolution, that is, alhamdulillah, we have experienced in our lifetime, is the greatest wealth that Muslims can get and get examples from the success of the Islamic revolution. So much so that now, after 40 or 50 years, because no movement get established straight away. Now it is spilling over in different regions. In Syria, recently we have witnessed. In Iraq, now we have witnessed. Even the Guardian newspaper, those who read international newspapers, you would know that. A couple of days ago, the Guardian newspaper have written that how the movement of uh, the success of the Islamic revolution in Iran is now creating an impact on the political situation in Iraq. So, of course, it is a spiritual journey that Imam Hussein took and created an example for the world, but it has also had a hidden message. And it is the greatest tragedy that occurred in the plains of Karbala because Imam Hussein gone to the maximum limit of what one can sacrifice. Usually a person sacrifices himself or one person. Here is the man who is sacrificing everything that he has. Leading to a situation whereby his conditions were being discussed many times that what was the reason for Imam Hussain to be remain in Karbala? It was not him. It was not his choice to be in Karbala. 
He was given even to say that there was a discussion so that he can go to Yemen. The scholars have written about it. He can go to, even he himself expressed that had I been allowed, I would have loved to go to Hind. One of the scholars have mentioned that. Al-Hind, India. That is Imam Hussain's wish was. But no, he was not being allowed to move around. He was channeled through, guarded through the soldiers and the poor who has been mind minding the caravan of Imam Hussain. All the way to Karbala and to put a trap around Karbala. So, so movement of Imam Hussain, you look at from the different direction, from the different uh, point of views, and, and different cultures have taken uh, Imam Hussain's movement from a different ways. And if you see it, then you would realize that how it can be understood in better ways. Because it survived. The dream of Yazid was that I will take him to a remote plains of Karbala, a remote jungle, no, uh, you know, civilization there, and I would finish it off his family and his, himself, and people will forget about it. At that time, yes, people were confused. Nobody knew where Imam Hussain was. Even, um, even uh, his friend yesterday, I talked about it, uh, Habib Ibn Mazahir, he did not know where Imam Hussain was. And he was spreading lies to people that yes, Imam Hussain have accepted Bayat, he's okay, he's here, there, somewhere, not explaining the reality what was going on. Not understanding that Imam Hussain is no ordinary person, he is nothing but a grandson of Rasulullah and he will at any cost will not accept the oath of allegiance from a, a person like Yazid. These are the realities of that time that we need to look at it and read about. The more you would read about Imam Hussain, the more you will unturn a new chapter. Each Muharram you will discover a new thing about Imam Hussain's movement and how the world have understood that. How the world has beginning to, you know, to realize that this is something much more sacred for Shias, for Muslims, for general population. Yes, the enemy of Imam Hussain will never accept that. The Wahhabi sect will never accept that. They will never even acknowledge that. Do you know that in India, Ashura is a national government holiday? Minority religion. 20% people, 30%, 25% Muslims. Majorities are, are their so-called kafir. They are not even Muslims. But the government realized the importance of Ashura and have declared the national holiday. This is the importance of the Ashura. That is the importance of the movement of Imam Hussein when it spread to the world then it was realized by other nations, other religions, that that is something very heavy, it is something very important, and the family of Rasulullah, so, so, so the family of Rasulullah has done something very important for the sake of mankind, not for the sake of themselves. As I said, mentioned uh, earlier on, that he was not after about anything. All he said is that Bahre Islahi Ummat Jaddi. That was his phrase. Bahre Islahi Ummat Jaddi. That my grandfather's religion, I am trying to put together and put people straight to Islah for the ban benefit of the, of the mankind that my father, grandfather's religion is in danger and therefore I have to do something about it and I have to create this movement. There is another story behind that, what he has, has reached and yeah, inshallah tomorrow I will talk about that story where, whereby what happened to him and his, his elder brother, Imam Hassan. But today I would 
quite like to pay attention to the point that there are a lot of youngsters, there are a lot of children. We talked about it, uh, the children of uh, Ibrahim and Muhammad, uh, the, the sons of Muslim and Aqil. Today, I would like to shed tears about and the light to the sons of uh, Bibi Zainab Salamullah, Awnu Muhammad. When Imam Hussain was leaving Mecca, he did not have uh, Abdullah bin Jafar with him and uh, the son of Jafar Tayyar. Abdullah bin Jafar married to Bibi Zainab Salamullah and they had two sons, Awnu Muhammad. And Abdullah bin Jafar comes to Imam Hussain in Mecca. He meets him in Mecca and he says that I shall not be around with you in Karbala. But Zainab will be there because Zainab's journey has got another movement after the massacre of, of Karbala. Uh, please accept my two sons who can be of, your, of, 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 of any help in Karbala to protect you. Now these are the young teenagers, youngsters, 13 years of 12 years age, uh, two boys, on Muhammad, son of Abdullah bin Jafar and Bibi Zainab Salam. And he handed over to them to Imam Hussain in Mecca to represent them, to represent them in Karbala. Onu Muhammad are generous kids who obviously loved his uncle. And when the time came for them to give their lives, they go to their uncle Imam Hussain and he says that. I have to offer myself to the protection and to contribute our lives to the movement of your great movement. Please allow us to go to the cover, to the uh, battlefield. The Imam Sen says, no boys, you are too young to go to the battlefield. And Bibi Zainab Salam Allah requested the brother, no, allow them to go to, Karba, to the battlefield if they are there to sacrifice themselves. So children, teenagers, youth, full youth and old, all ages have contributed to the Battle of Karbala. And this is one of the beauty of the Battle of Karbala is that you would find from six months old baby of Imam Hussain to the 80 year old Habib ibn Mazahir. You know, a lot of people who are old, Zuhair ibn Ayn, you know, Muslim is the Ausajas. These are old people, skilled sword fighters. But look at the range of people who supported Imam Hussein, who fought for Imam Hussein uh, during the day of Ashur. So these Muhammad and the honor Muhammad goes to battlefield, fights very bravely because their sword fighting was trained by nobody than uh, the. Uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen as well as a grandfather and uh, they were representative of they said that from one side one son will Abdullah bin Jafar said that one son will represent Jafar at the yard from one side and the other son will represent Amir al-Mu'mineen's family the two families children are in the battlefield now fighting bravely defending Islam Everybody who fought in Karbala defended Islam. They had no personal gain to gain from this battle. They had no glory to be achieved from it. They have sacrificed themselves so the Islam could live. And these two boys, when they have actually passed away, fighting hungry and thirsty, as you know that three days before the battle of Ashura, the water supply has been cut off. The food supply has been cut off. Beside the fact that they were in the, uh, you know, ad adjacent to Nahar Farad, Euphrates, River Euphrates. But no, soldiers have cut off the supply of water. And these youngsters fought bravely in the hunger and thirst during the time of fighting as that happened. And when these two boys finally gave up their lives and laid down their bodies 
Uh, Imam Hussain goes, and he's the one who's going every time running from the camp where the bodies were being kept to the top point of their falling on the plains of Karbala. As soon as these two boys fall, Imam Hussain rushed to them and he, they cried that, Uncle, come to help. We are departing for the, for the world, from this world to Jannah. Imam Hussain goes and collect them and bring the body back to the, the camp. Now this was a tradition that whoever's body relate to whoever will come and cry and would receive the body from the women's side. Here Bibi Zainab Salamullah did not cry. And this is true to the fact that all historians have written this. That a mother like Bibi Zainab Salamullah put the, um, the prayer mat and he pray, she prayed the two rakah. The salah for salah is shuk that Allah has accepted today. My sons have sacrificed for the sake of Islam, and I thank Allah that Allah has accepted the sacrifice of my two sons. She did not cry. She accepted the fact of the fate. When did she cry? When she returned back. All the way after the year and a half, when she was released from prison, the whole caravan returned back to Medina. Then she goes to the rooms of these two boys. And when she sees the prayer mat of these two boys, two of her sons, Anu Muhammad, at that time, she cried. And she broke down and remembers that what has happened in Karbala, who she has lost in Karbala with many other members of his, her family. Auna Muhammad's presence was being felt when she returned back to Medina. In the, uh, in the absence of their presence in the house, that's where she realizes my greatest loss has happened in Karbala. Many mothers have actually, so much so that Rabah, the mother of a little baby, and I don't want to go into detail today, or there, but she did not return back to Medina, according to many hadiths. She said, why would I go back to Medina? My Asghar is here. My Hussain is here. For whom I would go back? The mother of Ali Asghar, Rubab, never go back to Medina. She remains in Karbala. However, the majority of the people returned back and that's another chapter that would shed light on the movement of Imam Hussain. The great, great tragedy that you have seen in the last few days, talking about the people who have sacrificed their lives. But teenagers like Ali Muhammad are equally powerful symbols of the family of Rasulullah because their progeny is as pure as any other pure. Progeny, direct descendant of Rasulullah, direct descendant of Jafar Tayyar, and Amir al Mumineen. Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.